April 18, 1996, USS Nimitz, Gulf of Thailand. An F-14, Tomcat screams toward the deck at 130 miles per hour. The pilot is carrying too much speed, too much weight, coming in too steep. The arresting gear isn't set for this kind of punishment. The tail hook slams into the number three wire. For one second, everything holds. Then physics takes over. The one inch steel cable snaps like a guitar string under 47 million foot pounds of force. One sailor dies instantly. Four others hit the deck bleeding. The pilot's mistake just turned a routine landing into a killing machine. This is what happens when a pilot breaks the arresting cable on America's deadliest workplace. Carrier landings are controlled crashes where everything must go perfectly. Our Navy pilots train for years to master the most demanding landing in aviation, but even the best pilots make mistakes. And on a carrier deck, pilot error doesn't just risk the aircraft, it can kill the brave sailors working below. When a pilot makes the wrong decision during landing, the arresting cable system can be pushed beyond its limits. Too much speed, wrong angle, excessive weight, poor timing, any of these pilot errors can cause that steel wire to snap with the force of a lightning strike. The consequences are immediate and brutal. The cable becomes a whip traveling at over 100 miles per hour, cutting through everything in its path. Deck crews have seconds to react or die. The aircraft rolls toward the ocean edge while sailors fight for their lives against a weapon their own pilot just created. Today we're examining the terrifying reality of what happens when pilot mistakes cause arresting cables to break. We'll look at real incidents, understand how pilot decisions lead to disaster, and see how our incredible Navy personnel handle these life or death emergencies with the courage that makes every American proud. If you have respect for our military heroes who face these dangers every day, let us know by typing RESPECT in the comments below. The Deadly Physics of Pilot Error The arresting system on U.S. carriers is engineered to handle specific loads. When pilots stay within those limits, the system works flawlessly. But when pilots push beyond the boundaries, whether through error, desperation, or poor judgment, they're playing with forces that can kill. Each arresting wire is calibrated for specific aircraft weights and speeds. The Mark 7 system can handle a 50,000-pound aircraft hitting at 130 knots. But what happens when a pilot comes in at 150 knots? Or carries extra fuel that puts the aircraft over weight limits? The math becomes deadly. Here's what our pilots face. They're approaching a moving deck in a heavy aircraft at highway speeds. Every decision matters. Too fast and they overload the system. Too slow and they risk a stall wrong angle and they can miss entirely or hit with excessive force. The most dangerous pilot errors happen in seconds. A pilot who doesn't reduce power properly. A pilot who comes in too steep because of poor weather. A pilot carrying battle damage who can't control approach speed. A pilot with low fuel who can't afford to go around again. When these pilot decisions overload the arresting gear, the cable doesn't just break, it fails catastrophically. The steel wire, under enormous tension just milliseconds before, becomes a supersonic whip. It can slice through steel equipment, concrete barriers, and human bodies without slowing down. Our deck crews train constantly for this nightmare scenario because they know pilot error is always possible. These brave Americans work in the most dangerous job in the military, trusting that pilots will make good decisions. When pilots fail, Deck crews pay the price. Case Study The Nimitz Tragedy April 18, 1996 The USS Nimitz was operating in the Gulf of Thailand when pilot error turned routine into tragedy. An F-14 Tomcat was returning from a mission and something went wrong during the approach. The pilot was coming in too fast. Whether it was misjudgment, equipment failure, or emergency conditions, the F-14 hit the deck with more energy than the arresting system could handle. The cable caught the tail hook as designed, but the forces exceeded the wire's breaking point. The steel cable snapped with the violence of an explosion. One sailor was killed instantly as the whipping wire struck him. 
Four others were seriously injured, their bodies broken by a cable moving faster than the human eye can track. But here's what makes this story remarkable. Even in this horror, Navy professionalism showed through. The injured sailors were immediately treated by their shipmates. The deck was secured and made safe. Medical teams responded with the skill that saves lives. The ship continued operations because that's what Navy ships do. The pilot's aircraft rolled toward the deck edge, but training kicked in. Full power, proper technique, and years of preparation allowed the crew to regain control and execute an emergency recovery. The aircraft survived, but the human cost was already paid. This incident changed how the Navy approaches pilot training and arresting gear procedures. New safety protocols were developed. Training was enhanced. The goal became preventing pilot errors that could overload the system and kill deck personnel. What stands out is how the crew responded. Despite losing a shipmate and seeing others badly hurt, they didn't abandon their posts. They continued working, continued serving, continued putting their lives on the line for America. That's the kind of dedication that makes our Navy the finest in the world. How Pilot Decisions Create Disasters Pilot error can overload arresting cables in several ways, and each one puts deck crews at risk. The most common is excessive approach speed. When pilots come in too fast, whether from poor technique, equipment problems, or emergency situations, they're asking the cable to absorb more energy than it was designed to handle. Weight is another killer. Pilots sometimes return with more fuel than planned or carry battle damage that increases aircraft weight. When a heavy aircraft hits at normal speed, it can still overload the system. The cable doesn't know why the plane is heavy. It just knows it can't handle the load. Approach angle matters too. Pilots who come in too steep hit the deck with more vertical force. This creates shock loads that stress the cable beyond its limits. The system is designed for controlled impacts, not crash landings. Then there's the human factor. Tired pilots make mistakes. Stressed pilots take risks. Inexperienced pilots misjudge conditions. Combat pilots returning from missions might be dealing with damage, low fuel, or wounded crew members. All of these factors can lead to decisions that break cables and kill sailors. But here's what makes our Navy pilots special. They own their mistakes. When pilot error causes cable breaks, the pilots don't make excuses. They learn from it. They change their procedures. They make themselves better so it never happens again. The relationship between pilots and deck crews is built on trust. Deck crews trust pilots to make good approaches. Pilots trust deck crews to maintain perfect equipment. When either side fails, people die. But that trust also drives both groups to be the best they can possibly be. Before we continue with more incredible stories about our Navy heroes, I'd appreciate your support. If you're enjoying learning about how our military handles impossible situations, please hit that subscribe button. Your subscription helps us tell more stories about the brave Americans who serve our country. So take a second to subscribe. It really helps. When everything goes wrong, sometimes pilots face impossible choices that can lead to cable breaks. Battle damage scenarios where the aircraft can't maintain proper approach speed. Emergency situations where normal procedures don't work. Weather conditions that make perfect approaches impossible. In these situations, pilots must choose between risking a cable break or risking their crew's lives. Many choose to attempt the landing, knowing they might overload the system, but believing it's their best chance for survival. The 2016 Eisenhower incident involved maintenance error but it shows what happens when systems fail. The E-2C crew made a perfect approach, but the miscalibrated cable couldn't handle even normal loads. When the wire snapped, the pilot had seconds to react. What happened next demonstrates everything remarkable about Navy aviation. The crew didn't panic. They didn't give up. They used their training, their skill, and their determination to fly out of an impossible situation. The aircraft rolled off the deck edge, disappeared toward the ocean and somehow climbed back into the sky. Witnesses said the plane came so close to the water that it had salt spray on the belly. The margin for survival was measured in feet, maybe inches. But the crew made it because they refused to quit, refused to accept defeat, refused to let down their shipmates. The eight injured deck sailors showed the same spirit. Instead of running when the cable snapped, 
Many immediately turned back to help their wounded teammates. They rendered first aid, carried injured sailors to safety, and prepared the deck for continued operations. This is what makes America's military special. When everything goes wrong, when death seems certain, when normal people would panic and fail, our military personnel find a way to succeed. They save lives, complete missions, and take care of each other no matter what. Emergency procedures and heroism. When pilot actions cause cable breaks, the Navy has procedures designed to save lives and continue operations. The first priority is always protecting deck personnel from the whipping cable. Sailors are trained to recognize the sound of a cable under stress and move accordingly. The second priority is aircraft recovery. Pilots who cause cable breaks still need to land safely. The barricade system can be deployed in under three minutes, a massive nylon net that catches aircraft wings instead of tail hooks. It's dangerous for the aircraft, but it beats crashing into the ocean. Medical response is immediate and professional. Navy corpsmen and medical teams train constantly for mass casualty situations. When cables break and sailors get hurt, these medical heroes respond with skills that rival any hospital emergency room. Flight operations continue because they have to. Other aircraft are still airborne, still need to land, still need fuel. The deck must be cleared, cables repaired, and operations resumed. This happens while treating casualties and investigating what went wrong. The investigation process is thorough but fair. When pilot error causes cable breaks, the Navy doesn't just assign blame. They figure out why the pilot made that decision, what can be done to prevent it, and how to better train future pilots. Most importantly, lessons learned are shared throughout the fleet. Every cable break incident, whether caused by pilot error or mechanical failure, becomes a training opportunity for thousands of other sailors and pilots. Prevention and Modern Training Today's Navy has learned from every pilot-caused cable break in history. Training now emphasizes the consequences of poor approach decisions. Pilots learn not just how to land, but how their mistakes can kill the people working below them. Simulator training includes scenarios where pilots must choose between dangerous approaches and other options. They learn when to divert to shore bases, when to request emergency procedures, and when an approach is simply too dangerous to attempt. Weight and balance calculations are more precise than ever. Pilots can't just guess about aircraft weight. They must know exactly what they're bringing to the deck. Approach speeds are monitored by multiple systems to prevent excessive speed landings. The relationship between pilots and deck crews has never been stronger. Pilots regularly visit the deck to see where sailors work, understand the dangers they face, and appreciate the trust they place in pilot decisions. Modern technology helps prevent pilot errors that could break cables. Automated systems monitor approach parameters and warn pilots when they're outside safe limits. But technology can't replace good judgment and proper training. The new Ford-class carriers use electromagnetic launch and recovery systems designed to be more forgiving of pilot errors. They can handle wider ranges of aircraft weight and speed reducing the chance that pilot mistakes will cause catastrophic failures. The human cost and sacrifice. Behind every cable break statistic is a real person, someone's son or daughter, husband or wife, father or mother. The sailor killed on the Nimitz in 1996 had a family waiting for him to come home. The eight injured on the Eisenhower had lives interrupted by someone else's mistake. But these brave Americans didn't sign up expecting safety, they joined the Navy knowing they would face dangers that most people can't imagine. They work on carrier decks because somebody has to do it, and they're proud to be the ones chosen for the job. Aviation machinist's mate, Jason Cummings, nearly lost his foot in the Eisenhower incident. His helmet was crushed but saved his life. Photos of that damaged helmet became a powerful reminder throughout the fleet. Safety equipment works, but only if you use it properly. What's remarkable is how these sailors respond to injury. They don't blame the pilots, they don't quit the Navy. They recover, retrain, and return to the deck because they believe in the mission and trust their shipmates. The pilots involved in cable-breaking incidents carry that weight forever. They know their decisions contributed to someone else's pain, but they also use that knowledge to become better pilots, better leaders, and better protectors of the people who depend on them. This shared sacrifice, 
pilots and deck crews both risking everything for the mission, creates bonds stronger than most people ever experience. It's what makes carrier crews families, not just co-workers. Lessons learned and moving forward. Every pilot-caused cable break has made the Navy better. New procedures, better training, improved equipment, each tragedy becomes a stepping stone towards safer operations. The most important lesson is communication. Pilots now have better ways to communicate problems to deck crews. If an approach feels wrong, if the aircraft isn't responding properly, if conditions aren't right, pilots have multiple ways to warn people below. Weight settings for arresting gear are now double-checked and monitored by computer systems. Human error in cable calibration, like what happened on the Eisenhower, is much harder to make with modern safety systems. Pilot training now includes extensive education about deck operations. Pilots understand exactly how their decisions affect the people working below. They see videos of cable breaks, meet with injured sailors, and learn the human cost of poor technique. But perhaps most importantly, the culture has evolved. Making mistakes is human, but not learning from them is unacceptable. Every pilot knows that deck crews are trusting them with their lives, and that responsibility shapes every decision they make. Conclusion? When pilots break arresting cables, they create disasters that test everything great about America's Navy. The technology fails, people get hurt, and death hovers over the deck. But what happens next shows why we have the finest military in the world. Pilots own their mistakes and learn from them. Deck crews take care of each other and keep working. Medical teams save lives under impossible conditions. Investigators find solutions instead of just blame. And everyone gets better because they refuse to let sacrifice be meaningless. The men and women who serve on carrier decks face dangers that would terrify most people. They do it anyway because they believe in something bigger than themselves. They trust each other with their lives, and they earn that trust every single day. Whether it's a pilot making a split-second decision, or a sailor dodging a whipping cable, these heroes demonstrate the courage, skill, and dedication that keeps America free. They make mistakes because they're human, but they overcome those mistakes because they're warriors. If this content gave you a new appreciation for the incredible people who serve in our Navy, please like this video and subscribe for more stories about American military excellence. These brave men and women risk everything for our freedom. The least we can do is share their stories.